The Americans had the Air Force's 3.5-inch double FAR or folding fin aircraft rocket, and the Navy had the 5-inch double FASR and HVAR. For shore bombardment, these proved very effective prior to amphibious assault. Special LCTs were fitted out with 1,000 launchers and 5,000 rockets. They were simply anchored offshore and pointed towards the beach. They are said to have had the equivalent firepower to 200 destroyers. The air-to-ground rocket developed quickly and fell into several specific categories of use. Unguided pod-mounted rockets and guided missiles, including anti-tank, anti-ship, and anti-radiation or radar weapons. Modern examples are the US Hellfire missile and the Russian equivalent. With few exceptions, the makeup of the modern missile was settled. It was tubular, with a solid fuel rocket housed at one end. Stabilizing fins were of various size and shape, some rigid were placed at the rear and often midsection, connected to a command and control unit in the midsection, and connected to the sensor or guidance pack, usually at the other end. The warhead would reside between these sections. The AIM-4 Falcon, developed by Hughes Aircraft, began in 1946 as a subsonic, then later supersonic, guided missile, using passive radar and infrared in the second model. Capable of Mach 3 and a range of 9.7 kilometers, and originally designed for bomber defense, this was switched to interceptor fighters. This missile flew on the F-89 Scorpion, F-101B Voodoo, F-102 Delta Dagger, and several European planes, including the Mirage 3. In honor of the day, some of the newest jets put on a show. At Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, the dramatic destruction of a B-17 bomber, a Scorpion attack plane launches its rockets. The AIM-9 Sidewinder was the first successful short-range anti-aircraft guided missile. A heat seeker, the guidance system was based on the electrical conductivity changes in lead sulfide when exposed to thermal radiation. Two thin mirrors, one on either axis, would reflect the infrared light into a telescopic tube within the guidance system. The first successful launch of a Sidewinder was in 1953. Then called the XAAMN-7 and later redubbed the AIM-9A, the production version, the AIM-9B, came off the production line in 1956. Over 110,000 have been manufactured over the years with a steady range of improvements. Its first use in combat was September 24, 1958, by a Taiwanese Air Force F-86 Sabre, secretly fitted out by the US Air Forces to test the Sidewinder in combat conditions. Unfortunately for US developers of the Sidewinder, one missile hit its target and failed to detonate. It lodged in the airframe of a MiG-17, the pilot was able to land the aircraft safely, the rocket was retrieved, stripped down and reverse engineered. Soon after appeared the Soviet air-to-air -air missile. Codenamed AA-2, Atoll was a direct copy of the Sidewinder, even down to the part numbers. Soviet air-to-air -air missiles, like all other Soviet armaments, were closely watched by the US and NATO forces and given their own designation. The NATO-assigned AA-1 Alkali, known to the Soviets as the K-5 Kaliningrad missile, was a beam-riding, semi-active homing radar type but suffered the same issues as the early Sparrow guidance system. The AA-5 Ash was produced in both infrared and radar versions and was discernible by its very large fins. It was standard armament on many Soviet aircraft for 20 years. By far the largest air-to-air -air missile fielded was the AA-6 Acrid in both IR and radar variants. The AA-7 Apex, designed for all-weather interceptors, had a unique three-fin design, giving it unprecedented maneuverability. AA-8 Aphid is a smaller, close-in firing missile. The AA-11 Archer, or Vimpel R-73, is the latest in Russian short-range missiles. It is IR homing with a cryogenically cooled seeker, able to see objects up to 60 degrees off its main axis. 
It has a range of 30 kilometers and can be aimed by a helmet sight, i.e. the pilot just looks at the target before firing for a lock-on. The radar-guided medium-range R-77 is a fire-and-forget missile comparable to the US AMRAAM missile and is so dubbed the AMRAAMSKI. It has a range of 175 kilometers at Mach 4, has a laser proximity fuse and can engage targets at any speed, including stationary helicopters. The semi-active radar homing missile Sparrow was the main armament for Western air forces around the world for many years. First developed in 1947, there have been several models and variants. From the unguided 127mm Hvar aerial rocket, Douglas Aircraft Company was commissioned to develop a guidance system. The diameter proved too small for the electronics of the day and was increased to 203 millimeters. The first successful intercept occurred in 1952. Dubbed AAMN-2 Sparrow, it entered service in 1956. It was restricted to visual range of attack and rode a guidance beam to the target which had to be optically aimed. Continual advances in rocket motor, guidance and warhead led to later models and variants, Sparrow 2 and Sparrow 2D. The Sparrow X was a nuclear-tipped variant that never saw service. The AAMN-6A was a liquid-fueled version. The AIM-7E saw extensive use in the Vietnam conflict. It had limitations but did account for 55 aircraft. In 1969, an improved E-2 version was introduced with head-on attack capability. The later version, the AIM-7F, had a dual rocket system to extend its flight and a larger warhead. Other countries have taken 7F and made their own advances, creating the Skyflash and Aspid models. There have also been the AIM-7P and 7M models, which have been phased out for the AIM-120 missile. 